Hello, everyone. Welcome to another movie review episode on the Cabin of Horrors podcast. I'm your host, the incredible Josh, and today we're going to be reviewing another one of my absolute favorite horror movies of all time, Saw, an iconic horror movie that stands the test of time. It revolutionized the horror genre, gave us an innovative story, and left us with an absolute cult classic horror iconic jigsaw. And I am so excited to be talking about this movie today because I remember when I first saw it, when it first came out on VHS and I watched it, I was not a fan until the very end. (laughs) As I'm watching the movie, I thought it was a little bit dry. I didn't think it was really leading to anywhere because in my mind, I had thought Zepp was the killer. We already knew who the killer was. We understand he just wants to inflict pain and carnage and absolute torture on all of his victims, right? We didn't really didn't realize at the time that there was an actual purpose behind everything. That comes later in the franchise. But as I'm watching the movie and as I'm going through, I just I didn't connect with it. I didn't like it. I didn't see the point of it. I just thought it was another low budget indie horror flick that wasn't going to pay off at the end of the day. Then the ending happened. (laughs) Then you see that ending, and as soon as I watched it, I was just blown away. I immediately, I understood why the movie played out as it did, and why we were brought through the journey we were, the way we were. It was an iconic and just innovative way of guiding the audience, and really putting their focus into areas that didn't matter at the end of the day, so that they could distract your attention from what was actually happening. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of things and talk about the movie that we're all here to listen about, Saw. Someone there? I can hear you. Who is that? Who's in there? Jigsaw likes to book himself hard-row seats to his own sick games. He doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. Not anymore. You are a drug addict. Do you think that is why he picked you? He helped me. Don't believe Adam's lies. first Saw movie came out in 2004. It was the directorial debut of the iconic horror director James Wan, and it was the beginning of a franchise. The first movie stars Lee Wannell, Carrie Elwes, Danny Glover, Monica Potter, Michael Emerson, Ken Lung, and Tobin Bell. Now the story itself, it goes down a non-linear path with its narrative. It has two plot lines surrounding the mystery of the Jigsaw Killer, who is played by Tobin Bell. And Jigsaw is known for kidnapping his victims and testing their will to live by placing them in a series of deadly traps where they must inflict pain to survive. While the police work to investigate these murders and get closer to catching the Jigsaw killer, Dr. Gordon and Adam are trapped in a basement chain to pipes, Dr. Gordon being played by Carrie Elwes and Adam being played by Lee Wannell. And in between the two of them in this basement, there's a dead body that lays in the middle of the floor and it appears to have a gunshot wound in its head. Now, in order for these two to survive, one must kill the other. And the movie does a great job in switching between the two plot lines and providing insight as to how they really interconnect with each other. You get to see the effects of the Jigsaw Killer through the eyes of police detectives, which gives the movie a kind of a true crime feel, which I really enjoyed. 
And for those who came for the horror and gore side of things, that's really where the hostage situation with Dr. Gordon and Adam comes into play, because you definitely get to see some pretty gory scenes there. While this movie does contain much less graphic violence than the installments to follow, it really still does an amazing job of creating a tense and terrifying atmosphere despite that. Now let's talk a little bit about how Saw came to be, how the franchise even started. It really all started with James Wan and Lee Wannell. They had a desire to fund a film after finishing film school in Australia. They watched another low-budget film, The Blair Witch Project, <laughs> and they were really inspired by that to create their own film. So they started brainstorming ideas and they landed on shooting two actors in one room because it would be an, an expensive option. It's not going to cost a lot to rent a room, have two actors in it, and just shoot. So initially, the duo of Juan and Wannell had $30,000 funded into the film, though it was clear the script that they had developed required a lot more funding. The screenplay for Saw was written by Wannell, who co-created the story with James Wan in 2001. But they kept hitting roadblocks in Australia when they kept trying to get their script produced. That's what prompted the duo to make their way over to Los Angeles with the script. So they shot a low-budget short film, which was based on the jaw trap scene from the script, and it was an effort to really attract producers to the film. They wanted something to be shocking and intriguing and engaging to them so that they would jump on board and help them fund their film. And they shot the short film over two days utilizing a 16mm camera. And Wannell wanted to be the lead character in a feature film, so it worked well for the duo when it came time to market the short film. Because instead of just trying to sell a script that the two of them produced, they decided to market it as a director-actor team-up at the helm. And after the success of their short film, they were then given a small budget of $1.2 million to shoot the movie and completed it in 18 days. The funny thing is, the character of Jigsaw didn't actually form until months later. Wannell was working at a job which made him terribly unhappy, we can all understand how that is, and he began experiencing migraines, and that prompted him to visit a neurologist. And he's waiting in the waiting room for his MRI. He's all nervous. And he thought, what would happen if you were given the news you were going to die soon? He was sitting there thinking, what if somebody came up to me and said, you are going to die soon? And it was a definitive, you couldn't do anything about it. This is what really trickled into his ideas for the character of Jigsaw. So he began to imagine the character having a short amount of time to live himself. And then that inspiring his method for killing his victims. And it really revolutionized the horror genre as a whole, right? The first Saw film was totally different than anything we had seen before, especially the way the story itself played out. And the fact that it was such a low-budget film and it was still able to be produced the way it was is just absolutely incredible. It was picked up by Lionsgate Films, actually, while it was premiering at the Sundance Film Festival. And originally, they planned to release the film as a direct-to-video product, but because of the positive reactions that the movie got at Sundance, they decided to change that. And the first entry in Saw, the first movie, was released on October 29th, 2004. Positive reviews from critics and audiences alike came pouring out. It opened at the third spot on Halloween weekend across 2,315 theaters and ended up grossing $18.2 million on its opening weekend alone. This gave Lionsgate their second best opening ever. Their first came with Fahrenheit 9-11 in 2004. So of course, Lionsgate sees, sees dollar signs. <laughs> Lionsgate is seeing money everywhere with this franchise. And it continued to make money after its opening weekend. It added an additional 152 theaters after the opening weekend and made $11 million on its second week. Worldwide, Saw grossed $103 million, making it at the time the most profitable horror film. And then once it hit home video, those numbers continued to skyrocket. It, it wasn't stopping at that point, right? Word of mouth is spreading. People are talking about the movie and they're definitely talking about that twist ending and everyone has to see it at that point. So once it hit home video, those numbers just continued to skyrocket. They released it on VHS and DVD on February 15th, 2005. And it made $11.1 million in rentals during its first week alone. And it remained the top rental for weeks to come and made over $70 million in DVD and VHS sales alone. That doesn't include box office, <laughs> just VHS and DVD sales. That's insane. The real reason why it made so much money is because of its intricacy. It really had intricate webs throughout the movie, which made it one of the most innovative films in the horror genre. You start the movie by seeing a man named Adam awakening in a bathtub with his ankle chained to a pipe. Across from him is another man, Dr. Gordon, who's also chained to a pipe. 
you know shit's going down. You know shit's getting real when this is how your movie starts. Both of these men appear to be in an isolated basement of some sort, and the body of a dead guy is laying between them in a pool of blood. And the dead, the best part is the dead guy's holding a revolver and a micro cassette recorder. And then both guys find that they're holding a cassette tape in each of their pockets. So it's got that puzzle aspect to it, right? Where they have to put these pieces together to figure out what the fuck they're even doing and how the fuck they're going to get out of this situation. So Adam takes the recorder off the dead man's body, starts listening to his tape, and the voice on the tape urges him to survive. Dr. Gordon puts his tape in, listens to it, it urges him to kill Adam by 6 o'clock, or his entire family dies, Dr. Gordon's family. So the beginning of the film establishes that you're, you're going to be in for a thrill, so you better buckle the fuck up. <laughs> now before we put those buckles in place, we're going to head over to Instagram and take some comments from some of the followers on the Cabin of Horrors podcast Instagram. I recently asked my Instagram followers to describe the Saw franchise in five words or less. I know, just a little bit difficult, right? <laughs> Can't make it easy for them. So the first comment comes from Pennywise underscore we underscore all underscore float, which is one of my favorite people on Instagram, by the way. You need to go check her out because she has a great profile. She shares that the movie is just perfect. I totally agree. The first Saw movie is the recipe for success. The next comment comes from Mulholland Days, which says should have been a TV show. I actually agree with that comment. The reason being is because the Saw franchise has so much lore in it, and there's so much more that can still be explored, whether that be from Jigsaw's perspective, or the perspective of survivors, or even the perspective of people who were placed in the traps, getting to see them before they were put in that trap, and what they did to basically have to deal with Jigsaw. There's so much that can be done with the Saw franchise to put it in a TV show and make it a series, that I really think it should be a TV show. What do you guys think? I really, I, I think it should. The next comment comes from Skellington Fan, says it's awesome, obviously. Dark Sparks on Instagram says, mind trip and brutal. A mind trip is definitely the way to describe the first Saw movie, because if it's your first time watching it, I would definitely not listen to this podcast episode. <laughs> if you have not seen Saw yet, turn off this episode right now, go watch Saw, and then come back and listen to the rest of it, because I would hate to be the guy who spoils the ending of this movie for you because it is an absolute mind trip throughout the entire movie you think you know what's going on you think you know but you really don't until the last two minutes of the movie when everything just comes together it's absolutely amazing another one of my favorite podcasts that i like to listen to you run podcast go check them out they're another horror podcast that i absolutely love they do true crime they do a whole bunch of guest appearances Check them out on Instagram and on all of their podcast platforms. Although I'm not agreeing with their comment. <laughs> I'm not agreeing with Scott from You Run Podcast's comment where he says, Overrated, cheap, gore porn, trash. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I respect everyone's opinion. But it doesn't mean the opinion has to be right. Right? <laughs> Scott, if you're listening, I'm kidding. I love you. You're great. You're great. <laughs> Thank you for the opinion because I want, I, I love it. Uh, the last one that comes in is from Vampira Sky underscore Wolf Moon, who says one or two was enough. <laughs> that, that seems to be a common consensus between a lot of Saw fans is that either the first two were great or the first few were great, or even the four or five and six were great and the rest were crap. There's, there's not a lot of people that actually like the entire Saw franchise. <laughs> I do. I, I love every single movie that has been released except for Jigsaw and Spiral. I don't count those two as movies in the Saw franchise. I do not even consider them in existence. I consider them crappy spinoffs. Jigsaw itself, it wasn't so bad. Jigsaw wasn't a terrible movie. It just wasn't a Saw movie. It still was deep in the lore of the franchise films it was still connected in some way to tobin bell's jigsaw where spiral was just a complete fucking shit show and had nothing to do with saw and was just literally chris rock trying to bank off the horror genre trying to be the next jordan peele <laughs> like come on anyways that's what my instagram followers have to say about saw about the franchise thank you everyone who submitted comments i absolutely love it when my followers give me content 
<laughs> and I also love to hear what you have to say. I want to know how everyone feels about Saw. And I, I thank everyone who gave their, their two cents. All right, so back to the movie. Things begin to really heat up once Adam finds a bag that contains two hacksaws. And that really implies the two guys are going to have to cut through their chains in order to survive. So Adam gives it a try. He starts trying to saw through the chains with his hacksaw as if it can saw through metal or something. Like I don't know where that logic came in, but I guess when you're in that situation and you're in a panic, you're going to try anything and everything to fucking get out of it, right? And it was at that point, Dr. Gordon realizes that the hacksaws aren't meant to cut through the chains. They're meant to cut through their own feet. And it's this realization that kind of puts the light bulb off in Dr. Gordon's head of what's going on here. He then realizes they've been captured by the Jigsaw Killer. The reason why is because he was actually considered a suspect. People thought, well not people, the detectives thought that Dr. Gordon was the Jigsaw Killer. And this is where the second plot of the movie starts to be revealed. We get to see events that occurred before the trap that we're watching right now with Dr. Gordon and Adam. So we move back to five months prior. To, to this incident happening where the two of them are kidnapped. Dr. Gordon's under interrogation by two detectives on the Jigsaw case, David Tapp and Stephen Singh. And because a pen light was found at one of the crime scenes with Dr. Gordon's fingerprints on it, he's now considered a suspect in the crimes. Although Dr. Gordon has an alibi. Unfortunately, it's not a good alibi for him, <laughs> but it's still an alibi. Unfortunately, he was with a patient after hours, if you catch my drift. He wasn't exactly being the most faithful man to his family at the time, but still an alibi that cleared him of being related to the Jigsaw murders. Though at the time, detectives are still iffy, so they ask Dr. Gordon to stick around and review a testimony of Jigsaw's only survivor, Amanda Young. So they bring Amanda in, he reviews the evidence surrounding Amanda Young's capture, Tap and Singh were able to locate Jigsaw's warehouse. They apprehend him while saving a man from one of his traps, but Jigsaw makes his escape by cutting Tap's throat, and then Detective Singh triggers a shotgun trap, which blows off half his body. So at this point, he's dead. We're pretty sure that Tap's dead because his throat's cut. This is when the movie then moves back to present, and we see Dr. Gordon's family being held hostage in their apartment as their captor watches Adam and Dr. Gordon through a hidden camera in the room. So we know now that Gordon and Adam are being watched. They're being monitored by what we assume to be the killer through these monitors. Though they're not the only ones that are being monitored. Detective Tapp is also watching Dr. Gordon's apartment because he's so obsessed with the Jigsaw case, he's been discharged from the police service after all the events that have unfolded, and he still believes that somehow Dr. Gordon is related to the Jigsaw murders. It's because of this obsession that Dr. Gordon's the true killer behind the murders that Tap starts watching him, monitoring him, stalking him, and we even find out that he has a tie to Adam later on. Now we move back to the basement where Adam and Dr. Gordon are there. They, they turn off the lights and find a marked X on the wall and locate a box in there containing two cigarettes, a lighter, and a cell phone, which is only set to receive calls. So both men start to remember more of what happened to them before they woke up in the room that they were held captive in. They start to recall their abduction. Dr. Gordon's in a parking lot. He sees a flash of light. And then all of a sudden, he's abducted by a pig-masked figure, though not much more is remembered by him. Adam in his house is developing photographs, which reveal to be photographs of Dr. Gordon he's been secretly taking, when also a pig-masked figure breaks into his house and kidnaps him. This is really where the mystery behind Adam starts to unfold, because now you know Adam has a connection to Dr. Gordon, but you're not sure why. And this only intensifies when he gets a phone call from his wife, Allison, who's still being held captive. And Allison is forced to call him at gunpoint by her captor. So she warns Dr. Gordon not to believe Adam and that he knew him before they were held captive. And it's at that point, Dr. Gordon starts calling out Adam, right? He's, he's like, okay, nothing's happening to you, motherfucker. Like, my family's being held captive. I'm being forced to kill you. What fucking role do you have to play in this, right? So he calls him out straight up. And it's at that point that we find out that Adam was hired by Detective Tapp to take photos of him. So that's where those photos came into play. And he also shares knowledge of Dr. Gordon's love affair, whom he visited the night of his abduction. And during this conversation, a photograph is found by Adam, which reveals the captor of Dr. Gordon's family to be an orderly at his hospital named Zepp. So it's at this point we believe we have figured out the killer. Zepp is the killer. Zepp is the one holding Dr. Gordon's family captive. And he's the one that's going to have to pay for all of this at the end of the fucking day. Now, the clock strikes six, 
It's now the moment where Dr. Gordon had to kill Adam, and if he didn't kill Adam, well, his entire family now is going to be slaughtered. So, Zepp, watching from the monitor, sees Dr. Gordon still hasn't killed Adam at six, so he attempts to fulfill the promise. So Zepp goes over to Dr. Gordon's wife, makes one more phone call to tell Dr. Gordon he failed. Instead, Allison frees herself and, and starts ensuing a fight with Zepp. This alerts Detective Tapp, right, who's been monitoring Dr. Gordon's home because he thinks he's related to the Jigsaw Killer. So at this point, Tapp's like, shit's going down, I'ma be there and prove to everybody I was right about this shit. So he heads on over to Gordon's family home, and he's able to save the family. But Zepp escapes, so he proceeds to chase Zepp into the sewers. Eventually, Tap gets shot in the chest and succumbs to his injuries, unfortunately. Now, during this whole time, right, the phone wasn't hung up when the wife called Dr. Gordon. <laughs> so Dr. Gordon's hearing these events unfold. He's hearing the gunshots, the struggle, the screams, and has no fucking clue what's happening to his family. For all he knows, his family's already dead, or they need his help. So... With this shock, he loses control of the cell phone. He can't reach it to grab it and try and figure out what the fuck's happening. So he begins to saw off his foot with that hacksaw to try and escape. He succeeds and saws his entire foot off and crawls towards the revolver lying on the floor to shoot Adam. At this point, Zepp enters the room to kill the two men because, well, it's past six o'clock. You didn't follow the rules. You didn't beat the game. You didn't do it by six, so it doesn't fucking matter. So Zepp attempts to kill Dr. Gordon. But Adam survived the gunshot and proceeds to attack Zepp, bludgeoning him to death with the lid of a toilet tank, which in my opinion is one of the most creative kills ever to take place in a horror movie, to bludgeon someone to death with a toilet tank. That is using your environment to its full advantage. Now, the two men believe they've killed the Jigsaw Killer and they can be free. They, they've killed Zepp. He's dead. There's nothing else in their way. So Dr. Gordon tells Adam he's going to leave and try to find them some help. So he crawls out of the room with one foot while Adam starts searching Zepp's body. He needs to find a key to release him from the chains. He doesn't find a key. What he finds is a, another cassette tape player in Zepp's jacket pocket. So he plays the tape and realizes Zepp's just another victim in Jigsaw's game. He's not actually the killer, and he listens to the tape to find out the events that already unfolded for them that Zepp was forced to do. At this point, once the tape is finished playing, that man that was lying dead in a pool of blood begins to stand up and starts to pull fake blood off of his face, and you realize that's the Jigsaw Killer. He then tells Adam that the key to his chains are in the bathtub which was flushed down the drain, if you remember, at the beginning of the movie, the blue light that was attached to the key. When Adam escaped the bathtub at the beginning, the key went down the drain. So it's at that point, you know as the audience, Adam's fucked. There is no way Adam's getting out. The jigsaw killer was in the room with him the entire time, which makes it the most innovative and creative ending in a horror movie ever. So unique. And as the movie ends, Jigsaw is at the door, slams the basement door, saying his iconic phrase, Game over. I love it. I absolutely love it. The first entry in the Saw series is the most innovative entry in the entire horror genre. Everything about it was unique, whether it be filmography, production, character development. The fact that you don't actually witness the killer until the very end of the movie. <laughs> like we, There's flashbacks, yes, where you see some of him. You see him from behind. You can see him in the cloak. You can see the someone wearing the pig mask. But you don't actually get to witness the killer until the very end of the movie. That is one of the first times that's ever been done in the horror genre. It, the movie itself, it spawned a total of nine entries in the franchise. The first seven are the only ones worth watching, in my opinion. Jigsaw and Spiral, throw them out the door. We don't need them. That, no, that's just my opinion. Everyone's entitled to like what they like. That wraps us up for our movie review of Saw 1. Thank you for checking out this episode of the podcast. I'm really excited to keep doing movie reviews and doing other episodes where we just shoot the shit on a whole bunch of different things happening in the horror community. So make sure you're subscribed to me or you're following me, depending on whatever platform you're listening to me on. If you want more horror content, check out cabinofhorrors.com. We have tons of different articles there. We're going to be having horror merchandise and a shop set up here within the next week or so. So I would love for you to go check out the website. Follow us, Cabin of Horrors Podcast, on Instagram and Facebook. We would love